Welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's always nice to be back for another episode of Jim and Java. This is a special time of year as we start to get closer and closer to year end. Year end is a important time for most nonprofits as a great majority of our income comes in those last three or four months of the year. And that includes doing events, that includes contacting major donors, thanking them, appreciating them, contacting them directly. It's just a special time of year and very, very important. So we'll be addressing some issues like like that. Uh, I've been asked uh, by a few people to give an update on where things are at with regard to dinners this fall, events, and other activities. We certainly, um, once again, are, are continuing to work through all the elements related to coronavirus and uh, the um, just the different variants that exist out there. And um, you know, certainly I've said more than a few times the fact that uh, in March of 2020, uh, we were told that uh, we were just going to be down enough to flatten the curve. And uh, here we are 18 months or more later, and we're still dealing with things heavily. And uh, I'm afraid to say that we'll probably be looking at different variants going into the spring and summer of 2022, and quite possibly even the fall of 2022. So all these elements are, are they're just going to affect your event and you've got to make decisions on whether you feel comfortable in moving forward. Now, again, I've said so many times, every city, every location is different. Every state is different from what uh, the government will mandate, what they will require, whether it be masks, whether it be vaccination cards, uh, proof of vaccination before you can go into a facility. There's just so many things to consider. But as of fall 2021, uh, I'm still recommending with a lot of the organizations uh, and the dinners that and events that I do uh, to still continue to move forward, observing all the requirements that occur locally, and uh, all, but also just making sure and knowing that people do feel comfortable on both sides. There's going to be people who do feel comfortable. They've had a vaccine. They don't mind coming out. Some have not had vaccines, don't mind coming out. Um, but there's also uh, people who just are not quite ready to go to events. I just, my recommendation is to plan for about uh, a half to three quarters of what you normally have attendance wise. Uh, that uh, plan for that, for spacing, for uh, hopefully you've got your space available and you're, you've moved far enough for a fall event, but for spring of 2022 and also fall of 2022, uh, make sure that uh, you're, you're planning accordingly. And what that means is that you prepare them that your event size might be smaller, but you work with them in case things would change and that your numbers would grow. But also be preparing that you don't lock yourself in too much for a... Um, a loss if uh, if you have a minimum food and beverage and you have to drop less. I don't think we're going to have the government uh, putting the restrictions and the mandates that we had that w really helped us when it came to canceling events. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I'm finding that more and more hotels and venues um, do not want to move at all off their stance. If they are open, if they can have an event, they're going to want you to do it. So you just have to work through that. That, Like I said, that might be less people, but work through that with them. So that's our update. Let's move on to our question for the day. Uh, our question for this, this day and this week is uh, from Sheila in Fairfax, Virginia. And Sheila asks, what are the most important elements and appeal for a successful fundraising event? Well, Sheila, thank you so much for your question, and that's important as many of you who are, are viewing are moving towards events either the fall and the spring, and uh, especially if you're in the fall, you want to fine-tune your appeal and what you'll be asking for. Over the past 10 years, uh, really uh, dating back to um, even as late as 2005, I've really focused in on a couple key elements related to the appeal itself. From my standpoint, I've learned over the years that operating expenses do not motivate and do not excite people. It's important that you understand that operating costs to keep the lights on, Carpet, the, uh, the, the waiting room, or putting chairs don't really motivate and excite people. It's changed lives that excite and motivate people to make a gift to your organization. 
And make sure, I've used this term before, sell the sizzle and not the steak. The steak would be operating expenses. You go into a butcher shop, you see a hunk of meat, it's bloody, it's generally very cool, is not extremely appealing, but you bring it home, you open it up, you put it on the grill, you let it heat up, the juices start to uh, drop down into the fire and your mouth starts to water, you get excited, it becomes appealing. It is the exact same thing with our, our activities and our events. Our operating activities and events don't excite people. What excites people are our programs, our connection, the things that actually change people's lives. So make sure that you focus on those areas. So when you're presenting things at your dinner, don't just present your operating expenses. Present what I refer to as accelerators. What are three or four things? And you've got to make sure that you don't want to go more than three or four because it becomes too overwhelming. Most people are just sitting listening in an event. So you don't want to communicate them with too many things. But what are accelerators? Those things will take your organization from this level to the next level, to a higher level, and will make a difference in the lives of the individuals that you are attempting to help and to serve. So it's really important that you communicate accelerators and those accelerators are measurable and very specific. A accelerator that would not exist would be, we want our audience to feel better about themselves. Feeling better is a qualitative measurement. It is not something that you can measure. What you can measure is that we want to provide X number of meals for 80% or 100% of the people that come into our rescue mission at Thanksgiving. You want to make sure that you are very, very specific in your accelerators. Now, it's important that as you outline those, you let them know the difference that's being made through those accelerators. What's going to happen? How are lives going to be changed through those accelerators? What is it that you're going to do to provide meals to those homeless individuals and provide it at a particular time of the year for them? What is it you're going to do? Uh, if you're providing clean water, what locations are you going to want to go? In the United States, overseas, what country, how many individuals do you hope to reach? Those are the kinds of things that you want to measure. Then, as you start to work towards your first half of your appeal, which I've mentioned it numerous times, I like what I refer to as a split appeal. A split appeal is where you outline where their gifts and how they can give and then at the end, you actually fill out the envelope response device with them. But as you're outlining through the first half the costs of those accelerators, it's important that you give people an option to give annually, to give monthly, and what the specific will happen. For a gift of $600 or $50 a month, that will enable us to do XYZ, to feed five homeless people this Thanksgiving. And it is also very, very important that you include the so that. What is the outcome? What's going to happen? Just feeding those homeless individuals or just providing them with work training is not the total outcome. The outcome is that they can find a job, that they can become self-sustaining, that if you are building wells in third world countries for water, can they be self-sustaining? Those are the kinds of outcomes that you want to make sure is in every one of your appeals. So it's important that you outline. So every good appeal includes accelerators, those things that are above and beyond the normal operating expenses. What are the dollar goals that you have? And I've mentioned in other videos just how important it is to make every one of your goals evenly and very easily divisible by 12. $600 or $50 a month, $1,200 or $100 a month, $4,800 or $400 a month, $12,000 or $1,000 a month. All those are very evenly divisible. And it doesn't have to be a perfect amount that matches with, with what, how many people it reaches, but as close as you can possibly get because a lot of times there's expenses that you don't plan. Now remember, as you outline these specific things, everything should be positioned as it would, your gift of 600 would allow us to do things like this. This is not designated money. 
it's money that you say we could use it for this, but it doesn't handcuff you and it doesn't require you to get to um, use that money specifically for that. So those are what, Sheila, those are the elements that I believe are the most important as you have your dinner and your event. Uh, those things are very important. Now, I've got other Jim and Javas where we've talked about our, our um, what elements need to be in a, in a good event. So make sure you watch some of those videos on this channel. If you liked what you heard today, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and click the bell to be notified of future videos. We really rely and we need your questions, so please submit them at Twitter at DoveFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java or reach us uh, with questions on Instagram and just message me at Dev Effectiveness Strategies or you can always email questions at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. So for Jim Dempsey and Jim and Java, Thank you so much, and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Take care.